Okay, so now we're going to show you the setup of the house, or the room where we're keeping the kittens. So this is actually an extra large dog crate, and you can see there's some towels and the um, food bowl for the mom, food and water there, some basic towels while the kittens are not exactly litter box trained perfectly. Um, and then there's a giant litter box. Now that they've graduated, gotten big enough to get into that one, and you can see we've got to clean that out here in a second. Um, these kittens um, and mom all got a URI, so one thing we had to do was get the humidity up in here to help uh, clear out the congestion. So you can see there's a warm mist humidifier there going, and then there's another one over here, warm mist humidifier. And I say warm mist specifically because that uh, keeps things a little bit more humid and um, also doesn't spray the cold uh, air back down on the ground and get the carpet wet, which we had at first and learned our lesson there. And we measured this. I've actually got a cool little measuring device here. I don't know if this will zoom in. And you can see that's 57% uh, right now. Uh, instructions actually on the box, is mostly for children, is to keep that somewhere between 70 and 80%. Um, during the main bout of their sickness, we kept it between 60 and 70%, which is pretty good. Then here is the cool uh, little cat condo thing here we got. Uh, works great for kittens. Uh, it's a little flimsy and small for, for adult cats, but the mom likes it, and she's a small adult. so um, That's pretty cool. We got that ourselves just because thought that would be fun. It does keep them amused. There they are right there. Look how cool they are. And yet this free plastic bag keeps them amused. So have cool stuff like that around. Uh, make sure there's holes in it so that obviously they don't uh, suffocate. And then we got some assorted little kitten toys as well. So that's the view of their little world for right now. Oh, and when they're very young, we also have this little kitchen scale because we have to weigh them every day uh, and track their progress, which we keep for us all of our instructions for medical stuff. I know you probably can't read this, but uh, as you can see, sometimes there's quite a bit to do. Again, this is only because every single one of them got sick and apparently it was quite a uh, bad sickness. And you can see here's where we keep weights uh, on that. So that's one way of measuring how well they're doing. And we showed you earlier, here's the sink and all the stuff we got to keep track of, bowls and feeding utensils. And it helps to have a fridge around, so we've got a mini fridge here. As you can see, um, that's actually uh, medicine Clavamox right there. And then we put uh, the food, the milk replacer and the leftover mixed food in the fridge when we're done between feedings. Up, oh, and a cool cat scratching post. And then the kitten carrier, obviously for going back and forth between the vet visits, but also for the sick kitties, uh, they had to get a steam shower. Uh, and that's an interesting process as well. Anyway, hope this helps give you some ideas on on some tools and things you might need, uh, especially if you're dealing with uh, a case when they get sick. Oh. And here's the feeding. Notice the towel. Kittens are not exactly <laughs> clean eaters when they're doing the syringe feeding or the bottle feeding. So have a towel, otherwise all your clothes get all messed up with cat gruel all over you. All right. Have a good time. So we're going to make up the gruel for the kittens to syringe feed. We're past the bottle feeding stage. We need a little bit bigger stage, which is the syringe. We still need milk replacer, which conveniently has lost its label. But that was the hearts version. We had KMR before. You need a little bit of kitten food and then water. So the way to do this generally is to take the kitten food first because it'll be the most clumpy. This particular brand, and I'm pointing this out on purpose, is Royal Canin Baby Cat Instinctive because it is the most pureed, which makes it easier to get through the syringe. If you use other things, it's clumpy, and then that doesn't work out. So getting used to how much per thing is difficult. We put this in the bowl and we start mashing. This is real exciting, but you have to mash it up even more to make sure it's gonna mix with the other ingredients easily and become soupy enough to get through the syringe. It doesn't take too long with this, and we did, as you know, we didn't use too much here for this feeding. Now, that's good enough. We move to the replacer, which we have one of these little, uh, this came with a KMR, actually. Anyway, this is one tablespoon measuring cup. We scoop this out, roughly even, 
one and two on a personal note I like the KMR can better than the Hearts can but that doesn't really matter all right so it's a two to one mix which means we just put two tablespoons in there and we will need then four tablespoons of water however and you can see this isn't too clumpy so we can mash down the clumps real quick however experience has taught us that we get some warm water coming out of here and we need four of these but we just start with one for now because we want to mix this thoroughly and if you have more water in there then everything starts sloshing around and you can't properly mix anything so we mix this with just the one now and you can see how thick and soupy it's getting but you can also see there's not really too many clumps left and no matter what you do there's always some clumps so we'll work with that later now that that's mixed we can go back and get the other three remaining scoops of water two three and four all right back to the mixing and you gotta make sure you're not getting all crazy and get stuff out of the bowl. This isn't perfect. Specifically says on the sides of the cans not to use a blender. So everything is done here. It's a nice deep bowl. It's better than a cereal bowl or whatever. All right, this is a bit soupy. And so now it's hard to see this over film, but in general, if your kittens were growing properly and everything was done well, you would actually have more kitten food uh, in there to make this even thicker. Our particular kittens are well behind the curve because of the sickness they all got earlier in the mom so uh, you have to adjust this as they get older uh, and as yours are, are growing and hopefully not sick. Um, so now we have a two, we, conveniently we use the same bottle we had for the bottle feeding to store up extra. So we just stick the syringe in, pull it back. The syringe gets tight sometimes so you gotta be careful there. And then I use this as a holding container, since we've got a lot. Um, and sometimes if you don't have a lot of kittens at once, right now we only have two, so this mixture would feed um, three or four in one shot, so we're gonna have leftovers. Um, now you can see we got this, and I'll, we'll just do this individually. But what you do out of this later, to use it is you take the syringe apart, Put your finger over the, the top there and simply easily pour it in and then you don't have to worry about lumps and bumps or or um, having too much trouble turn that up there you go now we're ready to feed